In this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast, we're going to talk about our audio quality. By that, I mean we're going to take a closer look at sample rate, bit depth, and bit rate, how those relate to one another, and what they mean. So let's get started. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Channel podcast. Let's talk about hitting the mark for audio quality. One of the ways that we can hit the mark for audio quality is by understanding what sample rate is, why our sample rate makes a difference, what bit depth is, and how it relates to our sample rate, and how it contributes or doesn't contribute to our audio quality. And then lastly in this episode, I want to talk about bit rate. When you've got Audacity opened up before you, and assuming you haven't moved anything around within Audacity, you'll notice down in the bottom left corner of the screen, the sample rate. When you install Audacity for the first time, the default sample rate is 44,100 hertz. You can change that, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But what that 44,100 hertz means is that your audio is being sampled 44,100 times per second. Remember, we've talked a lot about analog audio and how that analog audio needs to be converted into digital audio before our computer knows what to do with it? Well, that sample rate is the rate of conversion. It's how fast our analog audio is being converted into digital audio. It's the number of digital samples per second that are being sampled in our analog audio in order to reproduce it as a digital signal. Digital audio hasn't been around that long. It really started to emerge in the 1970s, I suppose. Before that, everything was analog. But somebody a lot smarter than me, in a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, determined that the upper range of human hearing, I mean the extreme upper range of human hearing, was around 22,050 hertz. Now that's way up there. I don't think any of us could hear that. That might be more attuned to a dog whistle or something that a canine could hear. But I don't think any of us could hear that, but that was determined to be the, the extreme high end of human hearing, 22,050 hertz, or 22,050 cycles per second. Well, again, these same people who are a lot smarter than me and lived in a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago determined that if we're going to convert analog audio into digital audio, it ought to be sampled at least twice as often as that highest frequency. So guess what? 22,050 hertz times 2 is 44,100. And so that number 44,100 wasn't just picked out of the air and someone thought, well, this sounds good, let's try this. There's actually some mathematics behind it, and again, by people a lot smarter than me, who determined that in order to get good reproduction of analog audio as we're converting it to digital, it ought to be sampled at at least twice the rate. So 44,100 hertz was born, or 44,100 samples per second. And that became the standard. It still is the standard for audio CDs or music CDs, unless, of course, you're recording them in MP3 nowadays. But originally, you couldn't do that. When a music file was burned onto a CD, it was sampled at a sample rate of 44,100 times per second and placed on that CD. CD players, you remember those? Need to have their audio sampled at 44,100 times per second. That's why all those early music CDs were all sampled at 44,100 times per second. That was the standard that was set. If you had something other than that, your CD player was not going to recognize it and wouldn't be able to play it. Or it would at least have a really hard time trying to play it. So it makes sense that the higher the sample rate, the better our audio reproduction is going to be, right? So if I'm getting really good audio at 44,100 times per second, or 44.1 kilohertz, then my audio ought to improve if I sample it at a higher sample rate, say 48,000 times per second, or 48 kilohertz. And that's true. I'm going to get better audio because it's sampled more often. It's got more sample points in it. But there's a trade-off. The trade-off is in file size. On a short file, it's probably not going to matter, but if I have a real complex file that is two hours long, and I decide to sample it not at 44,100, 
but let's say 96,000, the file size is going to increase significantly. So there's always a trade-off there between file size and sample rate. But typically, as podcasters who are just doing voice recordings or as ACX audiobook narrators who are just doing voice recordings, there's not that big of a difference. And if you're recording a podcast at 48,000 or 96,000, you can probably get away with it. But the problem arises if you're recording an ACX audiobook, because when you're recording an ACX audiobook, ACX requires that that sample rate be at 44,100. If I record it at something other than 44,100, it's not going to pass ACX's requirements for your audiobook chapter, and it's going to fail, and you're not going to be able to use it. So if you record ACX audiobooks, you need to make sure that your sample rate is always 44,100, or 44.1 kilohertz. So let's transition into bit depth, because bit depth is related to our sample rate. It's directly related to our sample rate, and it affects our sample rate. Let's take, for example, the 44,100 samples per second that we're making. Those samples can have different sizes. If my bit depth is at 16 bits, then that's the size of each one of my 44,100 samples. In other words, each of my 44,100 samples has 16 bits of information in it. Each sample is going to tell me something about the loudness of the waveform at that moment that it was sampled, the tone quality, and exactly what audio was caught in that instance, whether it's music or spoken word or whatever it was. So a wave file that has been sampled at 44,100 times per second with a bit depth of 16 bits has a lot of information per sample. I'll let you do the math. 44,100 times 16 is a lot of information per second that your CPU or your processor in your computer or in your recorder, whatever kind of recorder that you're using, is processing constantly as you're recording. That's a lot of information. I mentioned music CDs a moment ago. Another requirement for music CDs is not only that they be recorded at 44,100 times per second, but they have to have a bit depth of 16 bits. And again, that just simply means that each one of those 44,100 samples has 16 bits of information in it. Bit depth is a measurement of how much information is in each sample. So if I expand my bit depth to 24 bits, I'm getting that much better reproduction in my audio. I'm getting more information in each one of those samples. If I'm sampling my audio at 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz, and I'm at 24 bit depth, which is what I'm at right now, it's what I'm recording right at this moment, then I'm going to get clearer audio. I'm going to get better audio because my analog audio is being sampled at a higher rate, and each one of those samples has more information in it. And I get a better overall recording because I have more information in each sample. So sample rate and bit depth are closely related to one another. I like to record my podcasts at 48,000 at a bit depth of 24 bits, because that's what my Zoom H6 does. There are other recording devices out there that will record at a higher bit depth than 24 bits, specifically 32-bit float. And that allows for extremely loud audio to be recorded. As a podcaster, I don't really have that need. I suppose if I was at a live concert and I had my microphone set up and I was recording something live and I was right by the speaker and I was getting 140 decibels of volume is really loud, 32-bit float would be the way to go because I can recover that audio later without any clipping. But I don't do that as a podcaster. I typically don't rant, and I don't normally yell into the microphone, so I haven't found a need for that personally. But it's there. It's available on different recording devices. Zoom has at least one that'll do that. I saw that recently Rode's NT1 microphone fifth generation has been produced, and it has built-in circuitry to allow you to record at 32-bit float. That means that setting the gain properly on your interface kind of becomes a moog point because the circuitry within the microphone is already at 32-bit float, meaning you'll be able to recover the audio if it gets extremely loud. But again, you know, I don't do that. Typically, a 24 bits is sufficient for me, and I'll probably stay there for a while. So let's recap quickly. 
Sample rate is the number of samples per second that your analog audio is being sampled and converted into a digital representation of what the analog audio sounds like. I mentioned earlier that digital audio hasn't been around all that long, and back in the olden days we couldn't see a waveform. Let me think about that a second. There was no waveform to look at. Waveforms are a relatively recent phenomenon that again began in the 1970s. And by the 1980s and 1990s, it really took off. It became the standard. But prior to that, there was no waveform to look at. We couldn't look at a waveform. We open up Audacity now, and we're working in waveforms all the time. But there was a time when those didn't exist because there wasn't any digital audio. So those waveforms that we see in our DAW, whether it's Audacity or whatever DAW that we're using, are a digital representation of the audio that was captured and recorded. And we can capture and record that audio at different sample rates and different bit depths. And both the sample rate and the bit depth help determine the quality of our audio, the quality of the reproduction of our audio, as it's converted from analog to digital. So let's turn our attention to bit rates. Bit rates are a little bit different. When Audacity is recording audio, it records it in a wave format. A wave format is a lossless, uncompressed format. It's a really good representation of the original audio because it's not compressed and there's no lossiness to it. But it can also be a huge file. And so when we're going to upload our podcast to our hosting service or our ACX audiobook chapter to ACX, we're going to need to convert it to an MP3 file. Of course, if you're podcasting, maybe you have an M4A option where you're at, but let's talk about MP3 just to keep it consistent and to make it easier on me. And when we're converting our file to an MP3 file, we have some options. The options concern the bit rate. Think of the bit rate as how much of the original information in that uncompressed lossless WAV file do we want to retain when we convert it into a lossy, compressed MP3 file. Typically, the higher the bit rate of our lossy, compressed file, the truer the audio reproduction is to the original lossless, uncompressed file. For example, if I were to export my project, which is all in WAV files, to an MP3 file, and I chose 192 kilobits per second for my bit rate, I'm going to technically get better audio than if I exported it at 96 kilobits per second, or for sure than if I exported it at 64 kilobits per second. Likewise, if I increase the bit rate to 320 kilobits per second, I'm getting even better audio than what I exported at 192 kilobits per second because I'm retaining more of that original information in the file itself. Again, that's an easy way to look at bit rate is to view it as how much of that original information I want to keep when I export my file into a compressed lossy file. Now, typically, because we're primarily voice, I mean, I have one podcast that I do that has a little bit of music in it, but it's not much. I can really get away with exporting my file at a lower bit rate of 64 kilobits. And unless you have a very well-trained ear, you really can't hear the difference, or you can't hear too much difference, especially if it's just spoken word. If you've got a lot of music in it, yeah, you're going to hear a little, little bit of anomaly there. You're going to hear something that's a little bit off depending on how complex the music, the music is that you're using. But if it's just voice, you may not tell any difference at all. And again, it's a trade-off with file size. The higher the bit rate that I set, the larger my file can be. And so again, if it's a three or four hour file, you, you know, you might notice a difference in file size. If it's a 10 minute file, it's not going to matter. Or even if it's a 30 minute file, or maybe even an hour long file, the difference isn't going to be huge. But if disk space is an issue for you, then using a lower bit rate when we export our file can help save some disk space. Some podcast hosting companies might resample your file after you upload it to their server. In other words, certain hosting companies might require your bit rate to be set at a certain value, and if it's not, they're going to set it for you. And again, you may not notice any loss in quality, depending again on the file itself and how much you've got going on in that file. So that's an overview, I hope it's a helpful overview, of sample rate, bit depth, and bit rate. 
sample rate being the number of samples per second that our audio is sampled and converted into digital audio, and bit depth is the amount of information in each one of those samples in our sample rate. And then when we export our file, bit rate comes into play as how much of that original audio do we want to retain in our lossy, compressed, exported file. Hey, thanks for joining me on this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast. I hope you're finding this podcast useful to you with some good information. And just a reminder that you'll find me on YouTube at Learn Audacity. I'm also on the web at learnaudacity.com. And I teach Audacity on-demand video courses at audacitybootcamp.com. Those links will all be below. And until next time, y'all take care. Thank you.